Okay, here we go, folks. We got cloud types, and we're going to go to this recent NASA photo. Yeah, it's Beano Black, folks, and here we go with more data. So let's go ahead and pump this up. We'll give this like a 200. We'll look at this wave cloud was taken in March. And this is over, I think, over looking over India, I think, or something like that. It was taken on March 25th of this year, 2012. And as you can see, the sun and the supergiants are, or with uh, also possible, possible uh, weather modification. Possible, possible. But for damn sure, no matter what, the sun and the supergiants is burning through clouds like crazy and I have videotaped some stuff on the 17th and I'll put that up sooner or later in a video. It's kind of dramatic and it kind of shows the suns, okay, because it was a kind of a natural filter. Burning the hell out of clouds real fast. Then I wanted to, uh, got me thinking on layers of clouds, ladies and gentlemen, okay, and satellite uh, engineers know it because they can see through clouds, ladies and gentlemen. They can x-ray your ass, okay. Heat they can actually, just like a heat gun, ladies and gentlemen, and anybody that works around, uses a heat gun at food companies or anywhere, electrical, mechanical, to check bearings, so forth and so on, transformers, so on and so on, forth. The idea that the satellite, spy satellites, can find anything on the face of the earth, ladies and gentlemen, anything, body heat, they can find it. So... And yes, we're usually watching human beings, and they did find that there's twice the number of uh, imperial penguins, I believe it's called, down in the Antarctic. There's twice as many. They counted twice as many, something like 500 and something thousand or something or million. I'm not sure. But anyway, 500,000, yeah, I think it's pretty much. But anyway, it was double the amount of penguins that... Uh, now this is talking about the king penguin. I think I thought it was imperial penguins or something, but it might be the king ones, kings and imperials, or whatever. So anyway, they uh, you can read all this. I haven't even taken time to read this, but anyway, that was a shot. And this is on the southeast of, of South Africa, 20 miles north of East Antarctica, if you go so International Space Station, only a part of the eastern coastline is visible. And it was taken from the International Space Station. Photography. So don't look out into space up there, astronauts, whatever you do. We've got satellites to look at Earth. So we'll put you up there in a space station, and you only look at Earth. Okay? Study Earth, which is good. We need to study Earth. But I tell you what, hey, put half the crew on that side studying Earth, and then get the other half of the crew to look out into space. But they don't do that. They bite their tongue. They don't want to talk about that. Can't look into space. This is the freshest shot from B. <coughs> I got the 21st to pop in today. Okay, didn't have this earlier today. So as you can see, they are moving their cameras around, or the satellite, pretty much just the cameras. I would think. The idea. I'm pretty sure that more than likely that is Venus to the right, and it should be the Sun all the way to the right. Also, they just zoomed in on something to the left of Venus, like I was looking at. Possibly something to do with the comet, maybe. But it looks like they're missing the comet in this shot. I got a feeling I hear something like an order, like, get that damn camera off that meatball. You're scaring the hell out of the world or something. I don't know. As we know, we're just seeing Venus there. So, we'll see what we get for shots later in the week. Anyway, it sure looks, it almost looks like there's flames coming off Venus, doesn't it, folks? And probably not, but the gases around it more than likely might be on fire. Okay? The planet itself, who knows? So, anyway, or whatever planet that is. So... So we got 11 cloud types, and I'm just going to check these out. And basically, simple middle clouds, okay? And also, this will bleed truth. Everybody can show that chemtrails are chemtrails, and we do know that, okay? <coughs> and as you notice, the distance is pretty much the same, and then they just talk about, it's just basically what the clouds look like, okay? Pretty much their form. And there also is the height, but also you see that pretty much matches the last one. Okay, let's go to the third one. There's your third one, and then we'll have eight more after this if you're smarter than an eighth grader. <coughs> okay, so there you go. So we have more than 11 layers of clouds possible, okay? And more than likely, we've seen studies where the more than likely recently NASA thinks there's more. 
I remember there's somebody that's went to school and studied this stuff, and then they've went ahead and took pictures of something. 20, uh, 20 to 39,000 foot. There's what some clouds might look like. Okay. Now, <coughs> I am not just proving chemtrailing. I know chemtrailing exists, and I know weather modification exists. Okay. So don't think that I'm doing that. I'm not. I'm showing what we scientifically have listed. I don't know if I'll have time to put stratosphere in here, and then I'll have this video to go to for people with heights. But anyway, so we know chemtrailing exists. Okay. Everybody knows chemtrailing exists, and everybody knows weather modification exists. If you don't believe me, look up weather modification, and you can buy some weather somewhere. And yes, folks, I'm being politically correct by not trying to pronounce it. <laughs> not going to tug tie myself on Monday morning. Monday afternoon. What the hell am I talking about? It's 45 minutes after the hour of noon, ladies and gentlemen. Central Standard Time. See, anyway, there's another example. Okay. 2009, 800 feet. So with we know that uh, the island over in Hawaii, and everybody's been in Hawaii, that's what kind of clouds you see when you're in Hawaii that are hanging around the 13,000 foot level of most of the, the mountainous areas over in Hawaii. Okay? Up to 13,700 and some odd feet. Okay? So, and yes, folks, I went in alphabetical order, as you can see. Okay? So I didn't go height-wise. Just went in alphabetical order. Blink, blink, blink. Okay, so there you go, and you're going to get an idea, factually, of what they do to weather modify because you're going to start noticing cloud heights. Nimbostratus, okay, there's your example. Not a very good example, I would say, but whatever. lower clouds 1500 to 6600 feet pretty much what you get here in the anywhere on a large continental landmass so here we go at the stratus 0 to 6600 foot and here's your example fogging up all right, so now let's go see what we got for if we got time for throw stratospheres in. Now, if you pay attention to the meatball shots that I showed you earlier today on my other two videos today, look at the videos that I made today besides this one, and you will see where Earth should be uh, with Venus. And uh, what else do we got? The sun's right there in the center. They don't show it. Okay, but there we've got Mercury. Okay, so like I said, in a V formation, and then. You would have, uh, let's look at stereo beacon, and we'll show you where the direction of the shots are coming from recently. And this is all updated, okay? This is fresh, okay? Of the of the angles and then the idea that I've, I'm pretty sure I got the 20th that I've got videoed. So when we were showing you Venus from B, I believe it was B we were showing you Venus from. I think I got that A shot earlier, and I'll sh throw something back on there too. So when you're looking at Mercury and Venus... That's where Earth is. Should be somewhere in that shot to the direction of looking at B. When you're be looking, for, you would be looking from here. You'd be looking from here this way towards the sun, and you'd see Venus. And Earth would have to be up a little bit to the right or below. It doesn't matter. But it's at that right angle of Venus when you're looking at the footage. So quickly, can you feel us now? Because there was just a 3.9 in California today. So okay. So if we zoom in, Los Angeles should have felt their paperweights or if they were having a nooner maybe somebody's clothes fell off of the headboard you ever had a nooner I've had a nooner so anyhow anybody that was in the greater Los Angeles area today it was not the US military practicing anything okay or anything 3.9 quake to there today so, and I apologize earlier too because B wouldn't show if that was B. I'm not even going to take time to back up, but if it was A I showed you then, it should have been to the right of Venus. But otherwise, if it was B, the sun is to the left. And if it's A, the sun is to the right. 
okay? And then we were interested in looking from B, so the idea that more than likely, when you're looking at this, more than likely, it doesn't matter no matter what, let me pause it, and when you are looking at more than no matter what, Earth is somewhere between here and here, okay? Because this is Venus, this could be Earth, that could be Earth, this could be Earth, maybe this could be Earth. But something in this area right there is Earth, as we got this huge CME, and we know that that barely hit, missed the Earth. So I would say more than likely Earth is here. I would think my the best calculated guess is something like that there is Earth or possibly this. That could have been our coronal reacting there, which is magnificent. And I'll see if I can pull it up. They got that going from, but this is, yeah, 418, 419. So let's see when that bursts, when we see that coronal. Yep, on the 19th, no matter what that little planet is right there, I'm pretty sure you can see it when I put my pointer right there on it. Uh, whatever that planet is, basically, it has a CME on the 19th. It has a coronal mass ejection atmosphere of its stratospheres, whatever planet that was. And it sure thinks to I mean, I would guess wildly good that, that the idea that that is possibly... I don't know. You take your look at it. Well, I'll, could, I'll try to draw that footage up. So anyway, this is the weekly. Let it play one more time. This is the weekly conglomeration of all the shots. And it goes through the 20th. Like I say, that f photo shot that I showed you earlier was the 21st. A lot of stuff happening out in space. CMEs like crazy. Okay, so here we are, folks. You know I'm giving you the real deal. And basically, you can see it starting right there. And I'll pump this up to like 150 or something. And you can see whatever planet that is, but we know that more than likely this is Venus right here, okay? And then Earth should be somewhere in around these planets there. So I hit refresh and it should just start playing. Uh, retry. And here we go. I'm not even and like some people go, oh, you edit sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I back up real fast. I don't worry about being beautiful, uh, Academy Award winning. So you got CME coming off. Sometimes you got to back up when you screw up, but otherwise you just throw this stuff out real fast. As you can see, one no matter what, a planet does an early CME reaction because no matter what, that gets bigger right there. Okay, and yes, this is going to illuminate whatever's here. So then we have gases or some kind of something around somebody's stratosphere, whatever planet that is, to right there next to the arrow, no matter what it is, because that planet is uh, reacting, planets around that planet or whatever. And we know that's Venus, and we know that reacts, and we've seen all this CME reactive flares of their atmospheres, uh, and it could just be light, but in, then it's electrical energy, so electrical energy goes mirroring, because it spreads out, as it gets reflected, and yes, like mirrors, yes, like crystals or whatever, but anyway, that's the atmospheres of these planets there that keep doing this CME reactive flare to a CME of the sun and the supergiants, okay? Atmospheres around planets, and because they're planets. And yes, we have that object there that's moved quite fast on us, and basically you can see a little, little comet right here, too, going towards the sun, see if it gets ate up or not. It's on the 23rd, so you have to watch today's footage and see if... You, We'll watch when we get that footage and look for that comet there to be coming up and hitting the sun more than likely. So as I come down through this, we know that that is Venus, okay? So, and like I say, that they were shooting down to see what this hugeness here is below the sun and the supergiants today. Now, the alignment I'm going to give you from A is going to be the same thing, but remember, it's on the other side of space, on the way on the other side. So I'll go back to the map, and we're going to take a look at this stuff, okay? I didn't even waste time about, I just basically knew I had this photo up. So basically this is what you should be seeing, but we're going to be seeing it from the other side on A, I mean on B, excuse me, on the 21st. So this was a recent shot, but that's the 19th, so it's not going to be far off of what we're going to see burning. So take your pick, or it should be one of these five, boom, 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 or boom. 
because no matter what, this should be Venus.